Hey guys, welcome back to another video in the Spigot series. In this episode, I'm going to teach you how to do commands and external classes in your plugins. Okay, so last episode we saw how to do commands um, using the on command method provided by the Java plugin class. So you can have it within your main plugin class here. But commonly within plugins, you're going to see them outside in different classes. And this is how we'll do it from every video forward. Um, so what you want to do usually is you don't have to do this, but I recommend it for organizational purposes. Do new package and call it commands. So all of your commands will be in this package here. Therefore, you know where to find all your commands. So good organization uh, right there. And so we're going to create a new command. We're going to call it God command. And just as another sort of organizational um, type of thing, you should end your commands with command, maybe if you want to. Um, you don't have to just because uh, it makes sense to call it that. But uh, you can do whatever you want, obviously, just for organization. Organization is very important. Okay, so now that you have this class here, what you want to do to make it a command class is do implement command executor. So a command executor is a interface, obviously, because you're implementing it, that allows you to override the on command method that we did originally in the last video. So instead of using so instead of overriding the on command method within our main plugin class, we're doing it within a different class specifically for this command. And you can use it pretty much the exact same way, except this time you don't have to check to see what is the command being run. The command when it's run is going to automatically be routed to this class here, and then the on command method will be run. So you'll see that in a second. But first of all, what I like to do first when I make a new command is just return true at the bottom. So we can avoid having the usage printed back to us if it's false. So this command is going to be a god command, meaning that you do slash god and it makes you invincible. And then you could toggle it. So if you're already, um, if you're already invincible, then you become... Uh, vulnerable so you can be killed but if you're invincible then you cannot be killed so something that you would see commonly on a minecraft server for a command like this it would make sense to check to see if they're a player first right because it doesn't make sense for the console or a command block to be able to do slash god it doesn't work for them it shouldn't work for them because they're not players in the game so what we can do is do if sender instance of player then we know that a player ran this command and then we want to cast a sender into a player object so that we can use it accordingly because again, the player object has things that a sender does not have, a command sender. Okay, so at this point, the command has been run. We've checked to see if they're a player, got the player object. Now we want to see if god mode is already enabled. So to do that, we can do p.is invulnerable. That's a method provided by the player class. If we do control Q, it says gets whether this entity is invulnerable or not. So if you're not very good at English, invulnerable means that you cannot be hurt. You cannot get damaged. You, you're invincible, right? Like a superhero. So if this is true, that means that God mode is already enabled. And if it's false, that means that they can be damaged and they can be killed. So we do want to enable God mode. Okay, so we're going to have an if statement here. So if P dot is invulnerable, meaning they're already in God mode, we want to then disable God mode by doing P dot set invulnerable to false so now they're no longer invulnerable now they're vulnerable so they can be damaged so we can do p dot send message just telling them that they're uh, no longer invulnerable so we can say god mode disabled import chat color since we're using that else um, this means that uh, they are indeed vulnerable currently so now we can enable um, invulnerable so p dot set invulnerable to true, meaning they are now in God mode. So then we could send a message saying chat color green, God mode disabled. So that's all we're gonna do for this command here. That's all the code we need for the God command. So after you make your command, you have to go back to your main plugin class since you're on enable method and you have to register it. So to register a command, you do git command and the name of the command without the slash God dot set executor oops dot set executor and then the class instance itself so new god command so that's how you register a command within your plugin now one final thing we have to do is again register within our plugin.yml so with the with the last episode we did not have to register it within our on enable method but with external classes you do but also you need to um, do it within your plugin.yml so we'll do it the same way we did last time so commands god is the name of the command a description will say become invincible invincible yeah become invincible and then the usage will be slash command so the command will be like replaced here with slash god and there we go so now we've registered our god command so we can go ahead and run this and test it out in the server
Okie dokie, I'm on my test server now. So we're going to do slash God. And it says God mode disabled because I already had it enabled. Now we'll do it again. And now it says, oh wait, we forgot to change the message, didn't we? So let's go back and just a little mistake we made. So we have it set to God mode disabled for both, right? Which doesn't make any sense. So for this one down here, since we're setting invulnerable to true, we're going to make this one enabled. There we go. Let me put this, replace this in the server and try again. Okay, so slash God. God mode disabled. Great. So we should be able to be hurt now. Let's see if those pillagers will hurt us. Oh, <laughs> yeah, there we go. He hit me. That damaged me. So now if we do slash God, it says God mode enabled. So now let's see if they can hurt us still. I don't think they're interested in me anymore. So let's see if we can drown ourselves. How about that? See, we're not drowning. We're remaining with the same health. And if we jump into this lava, nothing will happen because we are in God mode. Cool, right? So if we stand in this lava and do slash God, we're immediately about to die. Look at that. Pretty cool, right? So there we go. We have a God mode command now. Let me show you something else you can do. So I may have mentioned this before. You can do aliases with your commands, meaning that even though our command is called slash God, we can add an alias within our plugin.yml that basically if we run that alias, it runs it as if we ran slash God. So let's go ahead and try that out. So if we go to plugin.yml, we can go to aliases and it says alternate command names a user may use instead. So then you just put a list of the aliases that you want to use within the YML format or however you say it, YAML. I don't even know. <laughs> anyway, so aliases, let's think of some names we can use. So God, we'll call it, we'll say Cody mode, we'll say pro, and you can add as many as you want or as little as you want. So if you run this now, essentially this means that we can run slash Cody mode and it'll still run the God command, even though we registered it as slash God it'll still work the same way because these are aliases that run the same thing. Okay, so we can do slash God still, it'll work the same, but we can also do slash pro, slash Cody mode. They all work now, not just slash God. So those are command aliases that you can specify within your plugin.yml to um, expand the use of your commands, I guess. Anyway, so let's go ahead and show you how to do one more command just for practice. Now I'm gonna do a slash feed command. So when you type slash feed, it'll fill up your hunger bar. What I want you to do is try pausing the video now and see if you can make the feed command yourself. It's not even that hard. So try pausing and see if you can do it without knowing how I'm going to do it. And then when you're done, or if you give up, you can resume the video and see how I do it. Okay, so pause now. Okay, let's do this. So we're going to make a new command under our commands package called feed command. And as you can see, since I followed this pattern of command on the end of it, we just we automatically associate that as a command in our mind. Um, not really too, you know, revolutionary, but it's good for organization. Anyway, so we're going to do public class feed command implements command executor. And this will allow us to use the on enable method. And this will make this a command class. So just implement methods. So return true. If, by the way, if you want to know how I did that, let me, I don't want to brush over this. You know how you can hover over this and do implement methods? That's how you can make the unenable method. Another way you could do it is just have your cursor on this and do alt enter on Windows and then click implement methods. That's how you can do that. If you want to know how to do that shortcut, it's very helpful for uh, certain things like that. Okay, so now for our on command, we're going to do if sender instance of player, then uh, import player. So we're going to have a player P. Or you can actually use an instance of pattern match. So sender instance of player P. And then also you need to make sure your XML is for Java 16. Okay, now we can use Java 16 features. Okay, so if it's if it's an instance of player, we can do P dot set food level. And I'm not sure what the max food level is, but I assume that it would be 20 just like the max health level is. So I'm gonna try 20. And then we're gonna send the message in yellow saying uh, food set to max, um, bon appetit, something like that. There we go. Now, um, hopefully you were able to figure this out, but now what do we have to do? You can't forget these two things. You have to register the command in the main class here on your on enable method, and also you have to register it within your plugin.yml. So let's get that done. So get command feed, set executor, new feed command. 
and then plugin.yml. You can add it, just backspace down here to the right, you know, level on the hierarchy of tabs here. I think that's a tab, right? Yeah. So feed, description, um, feed yourself to, uh, feed yourself without eating. Cool. And then usage slash command. You don't even need the usage, but that's, uh, it's optional, but whatever, we'll have that there. And we're not going to have any aliases for this command. Okay. So now we've made the command very simple. We're just checking to see if they're uh, a player and then setting their food level to 20 and then sending them a message. So let's run this on the server and see if it works. All right, let me run around real quick to see if I can get my food level down. Okie dokie. So I got my food level down a little bit. Let's do slash feed now and it fills up. Great. So I assume that 20 is the correct uh, food level. Awesome. Or an exception might've been thrown if it wasn't. So yeah, we get the message too, as well as you can see there. All right. So those are the different ways you can make commands. In the next episodes, I'll be showing you some more advanced stuff, like how to do command arguments and uh, how to do configuration permissions and stuff like that, which are also very important to commands. I mean, uh, Minecraft plugins. All right. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. In the description below, I'll leave a link to the code for this episode so you can check it out. You can bookmark it, come back to it later. If you forget any concepts or you just want to review the concepts I taught in this video, I'll mark everything up with comments so you can come back and read the code without having to rewatch the video. Although your reviews are greatly appreciated. So yeah, I'll leave a link for that in the description below. So make sure to check it out. And another thing is I'll leave a link to our Discord server. It's a big community for programmers. So you can ask for help on your programming projects if you're stuck on something or maybe you can get some new friends. If you don't have any friends, there's lots of people here. It's growing really fast. You can get, uh, you can find lots of people who are passionate about the same things as you. For example, if you like Minecraft uh, spigot development, uh, you can find people, lots of people who like that. If you like C++, you like Java, if you like web development, it's a really, really big programming community. So uh, feel free to join. There's a link for that in the description below. And the last thing I want to tell you is that if you want to support this channel, you can click the join button below this video and you can join this channel as a member for as low as 99 cents a month and you can cancel at any time. You get some cool perks like early access to all of my new videos, a cool rank on my Discord server like you see right here on the side, YouTube members, and also you get to see yourself on the screen like you see right now. So if that sounds cool to you, feel free to join. If you don't want to, that's fine. If you can't, that's okay too. Um, I really just uh, appreciate you watching the video anyway. And uh, thank you. Thanks a lot. And that's it. So if you like this video, leave a like. If you want to see more, subscribe. And peace.